Hello, everyone. Welcome along to this very special live stream. I'm so glad to see that so many people have started to turn out uh, for this. And thank you kindly for your patience this afternoon as I caught up. It's Friday afternoon, isn't it? And um, uh, I think a number of things just all started to converge on me from my various teams that I have working with me. And I just needed a little bit of extra time to gather my thoughts about, of course, the most important team, the Mind, Brain, Behaviour One team, so that we could chat about the exam and make sure that we're all precisely on the same page about the exam and what it will be, what to expect and what to do if things go wrong, etc., etc. Howdy, everyone. Um, hi, Tushnetta. Good to see you out there as usual. Hi, Wendy. Wendy's sounding very excited. It is Friday afternoon after all. Hi, Kahia. Hey, Hamish. That gaming setup, hey? Yeah. Sadly, my friend, uh, it is a data processing setup. I need some serious screen space and some serious grunt uh, driving that screen space to be able to work with the, the very big data sets that I work with. Um, so, uh, you know, for example, when you've been working with SPSS this semester and learning to use SPSS, you've been working with um, creating SPSS files that have got maybe two variables or maybe four variables or so. Um, the current data set that I'm working on with my big national stigma report card study has about 1,300 variables in it. <laughs> you just wouldn't believe it. So yeah, screens are good. And, um, and uh, yeah, uh, but maybe occasionally they get used for gaming. There might be a, a, a PlayStation sitting over there if you look behind my, um, behind my shoulder there, there might be a PlayStation or a sanity station, as I will call it. Great way to turn my brain off for a minute. Um, when I've had days like this, actually, where it's just racing after doing so much work. Oh my God, what? Says Lauren Jones. I can't even. Piss for gang. Who's playing Battlefield on the on the PlayStation out there? You should come and play with me. Um, Kaylee, thanks for that. Best lighting setup. Yeah, I'm working on it. We're not done yet. We've got a way to go yet. And um, after semester, when things quieten down a little bit, then yeah, we'll we'll get to um, that spot where we can. Get the new lights in. I do want to uh, improve the setup because my my take on what we're doing together is that, you know, you're at the University of Melbourne. You should be expecting really high quality, I think, audiovisual if we're going to be doing this. So many people in the school. Uh, console master race confirmed. You better believe it. Hey, Yashika, thank you. I am doing well. Oh, mirrors on to me about the Coke. I should know that Coke isn't do isn't good for you. Yeah, it's definitely Coke. Um Hey, Ileana, you're reviewing the research methods modules and you have to know, did I have a wardrobe ready and change your outfit to make each one look like different days or did I actually film on multiple days? I filmed on multiple days and I had different wardrobes on each one of those days. Um, it, yeah, hard coat, that's it, guy. 
Um, it's true. You wouldn't believe how long uh, it takes to film uh, a module. Uh, so apparently Meryl Streep, I am not. So if, for those of you who don't know, Meryl Streep is famous for doing one takes. She'll just get it right the first time. It's hard uh, when you are not used to working, or even when you are used to working in front of a camera, it's, it's difficult uh, to do things precisely the way you want them. So the way those modules were filmed um, and the way new ones are being filmed for Mind, Brain and Behaviour 2 right now is that in a studio, you've got a director and a cameraman and a person right, uh, running an auto cue script in front of the camera that I've written. Uh, and um, it's much more scripted, uh, you know, and, and polished than something organic like this. And to do a five to 10 minute module, really you need to lock in for a two hour filming session. Uh, it's um, <laughs> it's a whole thing, um, but uh, yeah, I, I I was doing the V neck T shirt thing then, wasn't I? For those looks, uh, we'll have to. You can give me some wardrobe advice on what I should do for the mind, brain, and behavior two modules that we are about to be filming. Uh, let me, scroll up here. So, hi, Nura. Thank you for your very good question. I mentioned that I was going to close the discussion boards from 9 a.m. next Monday. What I'm going to do, Nura, specifically, is close the discussion boards for new comments. So, you will still be able to see everything else that's already there you just can't be making new comments. There's only going to be one place that you can make comments. Well, that you can, but I'm hoping that you won't need to. I don't think you'll need to. And uh, we'll talk about that in just a little while. There's a new discussion board thread. Um, a couple of questions here about readings. Will the recommended readings be available during the exam? Yes, they will. All of the course materials will be available. I'm not hiding anything from you during the exam. Uh, everything's going to be there and you'll be able to um, uh, use those resources if you get stuck with a question. This is the, this is the definition of an, of an open book exam. This is what an open book exam means. If you get stuck, you can refer to the course materials that we've provided. You can refer to the readings. You can refer to your notes. What you shouldn't do is Google. If you Google things, uh, it's going to go wrong. Uh, believe me. Um, Peerwise will still be available during the exam. That's right. So you'll still be able to play around with Peerwise during the exam. You might be asking yourself, oh, I wonder if the questions in the exam are on POIs as well. No, they're not. That would have been too nice of me, wouldn't it? Um, Alita asks, here are the questions about the exam going to be really specific, uh, about the reading going to be really specific? And is it only the required readings that are examinable, not the recommended ones? So for, I would, um, say, Alita, for most of the exam questions, if not all, that would relate to readings, you will actually find the answers in tutorial content, in lecture content, in research methods module content. Um, so you'll find uh, that the, the content in those readings has been picked up in classes. And so really, if you never... Neva, apparently. Neva is an interesting way to phrase that. If you never um, uh, picked up the readings, you would still be able to answer the questions if you really knew the, the lecture content, the tutorial content. content. Well, wow. So seeing you're all online, 
Uh, if you're on a computer, you might want to uh, have a look in the modules section of the MBB1 Canvas page, and you'll find that there's some new additions at the top of the page. At the very top of the page, in the modules page on the MBB1 Canvas site, there is now the MBB1 exam module. Now, you can see right now three things there. At the very top is the rehearsal exam. Now, again, the rehearsal exam is there for you to be able to go in and to experience the precise format that the exam is going to be in so that when it comes to actually sitting the exam, you are ready to go. You feel like you've experienced the format. It's familiar. That'll mean that you're less anxious and less stressed and more confident when it comes to sit the exam. And you'll see in there that it models the exam in as many ways as is possible. Firstly, you'll notice that there's some instructions and the exam will begin with some instructions. You'll notice that then there are questions and firstly, there are the learning and cognition questions. Then there are the sensation and perception questions. Then the behavioral neuroscience questions. And lastly, there is the research methods questions. That's the same order that the questions are going to be in with the proper exam. You might have practiced like I encouraged you to, um, sort of dropping out of the exam, simulating an internet outage, turning off your Wi-Fi, turning it back on, uh, closing your browser, opening the browser again and going back in and found that you could still keep going with the exam. And that's going to be the same with the real exam. If there's an internet or a power brownout, a blackout, you drop Wi-Fi, which based on all of the data coming from other exams is very unlikely to happen. But if it does, you can get back in there. There are considerations, however, uh, with time. But let's finish talking about the questions first. Remember, there's 100, and I just saw this in the, in the uh, chat window, so I'll touch on it now. There's 120 questions in total on the final exam. And those questions will comprise 30 questions from learning and cognition, followed by 30 from behavioral neuroscience, no, sorry, 30 from sensation and perception, then 30 from behavioral neuroscience, and lastly, 30 from research methods. And that's your 120 questions in total. Every person is going to get a different order of questions presented within each of those blocks of 30, but everybody will get the same questions. Um, in that NBB1 exam module, you will also now find a frequently asked questions document, and it's got very simple answers to some of the most frequently asked questions and the questions that we're talking about right now. How many questions are in the exam? Um, what happens if there is a technical logical, technical logical, good Lord, technological issue. It's so Friday afternoon, right? What if there is a technological issue? What do I do? The university has got support available and there's a link in there in that frequently asked questions document that you, you should actually go and um, prepare in advance of sitting the exam, click that link, go and see what is available in terms of support. You'll also notice there's a new discussion board thread in the exam module, which says exam clarification questions only, and then in brackets, read the FAQs before posting here. So this is really a discussion board thread that is available for the only type of questions that one would typically be able to ask in an exam. And of course, you can't ask any content related questions. Um, it might be if you didn't understand a certain word or something like that, 
Um, but even so, we've now had one, two, three, four, five, six of us vet the exam, and I'm confident that people are not going to find anything problematic in the exam that would require clarification. If you need to use a dictionary to look up a word, use a dictionary, look up the word. If you've got to use a bilingual dictionary, use the bilingual dictionary, look up the word, that's fine. Okay, um, let me check in with, oh, look at all of these questions, holy dooly. Okay. Thanks so much for all of these questions, folks. This is great to get these out so that we can discuss them uh, now rather than next week. <laughs> I found some of the answers to the practice exam are dodgy. It shouldn't be showing you any answers, Jesse. Um, and I'm not telling you what the answers are for the practice exam as well. And this is for an important reason. That's because you won't get to find out what the exam, the real exam answers are either. Uh, after the fact, um, the exam is not going to spit out a score at you. It's not going to spit out the correct answers once you're done. That's something that I will control and I'll release marks down the track uh, when we're finalising marks for the exam in the weeks following that and for the subject, I should say, in the weeks following that. Speaking about finalizing marks, I've got all of the REP data, I've got all of the data from the assignments and all of the hurdle requirements and so forth. I know that some people are um, have uh, special consideration around extensions um, and so forth in applications at the moment, and that's fine. I know that some people are completing attendance hurdle makeup requirement. Um, uh, makeup tasks to fulfill the hurdle requirement for attendance. Uh, that's fine. That's all coming together. I'm compiling that to um, process your data for Mind, Brain and Behaviour 1 at the moment. Um, but you may be uh, happy to know, Jesse, that Miley does not make an appearance on the exam. That was so not dodgy. That was the best question ever. Good old Miley. Um, hi, Z1. No, there's no slides available for the research methods modules. And that's because, of course, they're not really sort of slide based, are they? So, uh, no, no slides available for that. Subject, uh, hi, Trinity. Uh, some subjects have given particularly hard and mean exams this semester because of the open book nature. Not sure if you're allowed to tell us, but is this the case for Mind, Brain and Behaviour 1 as well? I am allowed to tell you. And um, the answer is no, we have not been mean. We haven't made the exam particularly hard uh, at all. Uh, we have um, established the exam and the format and the questions uh, in very much the standard way. Not much has changed. We've probably paid a little bit more attention to the way in which questions are phrased. And I've referred to this before. So you're going to see, I suppose, fewer um, definition type questions. Uh, like, for example, in my research methods modules, you will see fewer examples of me asking a question like, what is standard deviation? Which would be really very easy to answer in the current circumstances and doesn't do you any justice at all in terms of you being able to demonstrate your learning and your understanding of the concept of standard deviation. Instead, I might ask a more applied question about standard deviation that would demonstrate um, that you've got chops, that you know your stuff about standard deviation, for example. So it might be good to know about standard deviation. 
Um, you can go back and change your answers. Yes, that's fine. Now, so we've got that setting all worked out. You can go back and change your answers. Uh, that is a okay. Um, hi, Kiara. Yes, there are precisely 30 questions for each topic. That's right. I'm not surprised there's a tiny typo in the FAQ document. Uh, it got constructed just before this. And uh, what I would suggest with the FAQ document is that you have a look before you sit the exam. Um, so the exam, of course, we'll talk about an opening on Monday, but before you sit it, uh, read it again. Uh, I'll probably have some things come to me over the weekend uh, based on the questions that are coming in about the exam that I might want to add to the frequently asked questions document. So imagine that it's sort of getting updated through to Sunday night. That's probably when I'll stop tinkering with it. On Sunday night, of course, Charlie, my chocolate covered off. I am going to check in with you for a chill stream. So none of this stressful exam talk. We're just going to hang out for people who uh, want to chill out the day before the exam opens. Uh, and so that will be a thing. So we'll finish the FAQs before then, but there's already 10 or 11 in there. All multiple choice, that's right, all multiple choice. Um, you can go back and change answers, that's right. How long do we have to complete the exam? Good, good segue, thank you, Lauren. So when you commence, when you click to start from that point, you have three hours and 15 minutes to complete the exam. That's going to be more than enough time. You'll be absolutely fine. And the time is going to keep going even if you log out. So if you log out, if you click out, if, um, you know, there's an internet outage or whatever, the timer is going to keep going. And the exam is going to auto submit at three hours and 15 minutes. So there's two ways the exam can be submitted, either manually by yourself when you're finished, click submit, or as soon as it hits three hours and 15 minutes, it's going to submit itself. So you wanna make sure that you're keeping a track of time when you're completing this exam, just like you would with any other exams. Once it's done, it's done. Now you can sit the exam in that three hour and 15 minute window at any time, day or night, between 9 a.m. on Monday coming, that's Monday, June 29, and 5 p.m. on Friday of next week, that's July 3rd. So the exam will be open in that mind, brain, and behavior one exam module at the top of the module section. It's open there from 9 a.m. Uh, on June 29, Monday through to 5 p.m. July 3rd, the Friday. So knowing that you need, you know, maybe about three hours to complete the exam. You definitely do not want to be starting the exam after like 1.30 on Friday afternoon. Do not do that or you're going to be putting yourself at risk of there um, being an issue and the timer running out, the exam closing. You certainly wouldn't want to start at four o'clock on Friday afternoon, would you? Because the exam is going to shut at 5 p.m. So... That's the deadline for submitting, not the deadline for starting. It's the deadline for completing the exam. So you can complete the exam at any point during that time window, but when you start, you've got three hours and 15 minutes to complete it in a single sitting. Um, I am so encouraged to see you guys are knowing this. I can see that you're responding to each other. Thank you, Sneha, Sneha. Thank you so much. I uh, appreciate uh, that and it gives me confidence and strength. 
Lord, give me strength. Uh, do they know what's going on? It looks like they do. This is excellent news. And Lord, in a completely atheistic, non-denominational <laughs> sense in my setting, in my uh, case. Um, in a university practice, what is this we're talking about? Oh, hi, Chathuni. So wait, how do we know if we're correct or not on the practice exam? We don't have the answers. You don't know if you're correct or not. Um, there's a whole heap of other quizzes, right, for telling you whether you're correct or not. The practice exam is more about just modelling the conditions. And again, modelling the types of questions that you can expect on the exam. The flavour of the questions, the vibe, that sort of thing. No Miley, yeah, I know, I'm sorry, Scout, there's no Miley on the exam. But I promise you'll giggle at some point on the exam. Just wait. I nearly really need to work on my winking, don't I? <laughs> Doesn't look right. Um, Charlie the Chocolate Labrador. Yeah, Charlie's going to be back on Sunday night. That's right. Naraja, Naraja, um, you don't know which ones were made by questions, uh, lecturers and which ones were made by students on PYs in terms of those questions. Um, but uh, you've, of course, seen questions from Jason and Piers and myself that aren't on PYs and Meredith as well. So you should have a pretty keen, I mean, have a look at the practice exam. There's some good examples of the types of questions you can expect. Good on you for answering each other's questions. This is awesome. Thank you guys. It's so great to see you helping each other out. Um, I'll see if I can work in some Miley Cyrus, of course, for Mind, Brain and Boogie, the dance party we're going to have next Friday night after the exam closes. So we're going to live stream, of course, that you can, you can make costume suggestions for me as well, if you like. I have been known to end up in a grass skirt and a pair of coconuts at a dance party. Just saying. Yes, good. All right, we're answering... Uh, answering. So would we agree that coming in like a wrecking ball is the independent variable rather than the dependent variable and the state of being wrecked is, is the dependent variable? Is that what we're saying? Um, oh, Snowy Emu. I see an at Snowy Emu. Where is Snowy Emu? There's Snowy Emu. Do I remember me saying, you saying, that 15 minutes reading time is optional and we can actually just start answering straight away? Yeah, that's right. So within the settings of Canvas, I've got no way of just allowing you to view the quiz for 15 minutes and preventing people from answering. But what I've tried to do when I've established the time limits for this exam is, I suppose, think about equivalency with the regular exam conditions. And in regular exam conditions, you would get 15 minutes to look at the exam and then three hours to complete it. And I just wanted to honor that and hold everything constant. So you've got three hours and 15 minutes to complete the exam and you can start answering the questions whenever you would like. Good to see you out there, Snowy Emu. Snowy Emu, everyone, is, is one of the, I would say the, the veterans of the, of the uh, mind brain behavior chat. Snowy's been around for a while. Um, do we have access to SPSS and a calculator for the exam? You could access SPSS and you could access a calculator. 
if you wanted to, but they won't be of any use to you. You don't need them for this exam. I'm so nice. I'm not even going to ask you to make any calculations in this exam, in this research methods part of the exam. And it's going to be the same for mind, brain, and behavior too. Even though we start doing statistical procedures in the exam, I'm not going to stress you out by making you worry about calculating things according to formulae and these sorts of questions that stress people out historically. You've got better things to worry about, I'm sure. Prabal, thanks for your question. When I say the different order of questions, so, uh, does that mean that some people will get different questions from us or is it just a different order? It's just a different order of the same set of 30 questions that are offered. Um, that's right. Dance party, woohoo, says Jathuni. Um, yeah, just the order is different. Everybody gets the same questions. Uh, SPS questions fall under research methods. So all of those practical classes that tie into the research methods concepts, they'll come under the research methods banner in the exam. They're in the, the excuse me, I'm a bit my tongue. They're in the 30, um, in the 30 questions for the exam. A Miley playlist for the exam. Wow. If we use the 15 minutes for reading, would the three hours still be enough to complete the exam? Um, it's one of those how long is a piece of string questions, I suppose. I mean, yes, definitely. Um, yeah. Maybe it's not one of those how long is a piece of string questions. That's a simple answer. Some people are just going to blitz through it, I know. Some people are going to finish this exam in like 20 minutes, probably just smash it. Other people might want to hang around for the full time um, and double check and and uh, double check again and double check again. We've all been there, haven't we? Um, but yeah, there's plenty of time to complete the exam. Honey in the house. What's the best way to study if you haven't watched any lectures since week two? That's a big question, Timothy. So I would be interested to hear what the room could contribute as well to solving this sort of problem. Yeah, oft, says Sneha. Um, that, yeah, so people are a little, um, I think they're imagining themselves in that position and having to, to catch up. Diom, says Holly B. I think you can catch up. Um, so I suppose there's a couple of things that I would recommend to anybody who's in this position uh, right now. Um, firstly, if I was in this position, I would be planning to sit the exam on Friday morning, probably, probably on the morning of July 3rd. And I would be thinking about what I can do over, I suppose I'd be thinking about the bigger picture. What other commitments do I have? Do I have other subjects going on? Um, how much time can I actually devote to this exam? I'd be thinking about what my starting point is. So have I done quite well on the assignment for example, do I remember the assignment is worth 40% of your overall mark for uh, mind, brain, and behavior 
one. So if you got an H2A level score on the assignment, for example, you'd know you'd have at least 30% towards your mind, brain and behavior one mark. And I'd also be thinking about what I want. So if I've, what's my starting point? What do I want? What's my intention? Do I want to just be able to get over the line intact and survive this um, COVID semester and get to the end of it having passed my subject and think, hey, good for me, well done, got through that. That was a crazy ride, but here we are, it's all done. Um, or if you wanted to really ace it, then, you know, um, that's going to be a challenge. And then I'll be thinking about, I suppose, what's realistic with the time that I've got? How can I plan my time? What are the things that I need to look at and how can I break them up to devote a roughly equivalent amount of um, time and effort to each one of those things? I'd also be trying to build in time for self-care as well and making sure that I'm not trying to push myself 18 hours a day to study between now and, say, Friday morning um, because come time to sit the exam, I'll be frazzled. I'll be, you know, mentally exhausted. And I'm sure a lot of you are feeling mentally exhausted um, right now as you've been sitting exams and preparing for this exam and I'm <laughs> feeling mentally exhausted as well. Um, I have been... Uh, you know, it's been a week. It has been almost indescribable how busy this week has been. And uh, I certainly wouldn't want to be sitting in the exam right now. So hat off to you all. So for anyone in that position, I think I'd, I'd be realistic. I'd think about what I want, um, what's probably realistic with the time available and then set about a plan. So think about this. We've got... Um, sort of six lectures from each lecturer, right? And we've got about 30 questions from um, each. Or we have precisely 30 questions from each topic area. So, you know, there's about four or five questions coming from each lecture or sort of tied to the topics that were around each lecture. The, the questions will be evenly distributed sort of across the lectures. So you're not going to get 20 questions coming from two lectures and hardly any from the others. They'll be evenly distributed. So um, I would, my uh, sort of classic uh, recommendation here for economizing time, if you're really strapped, is to listen to the lectures, read through the lectures, pick out what you think are the core couple of points. What are the core take home messages from that lecture? the one or two things, know what they are and you're probably going to be well-placed to answer the others. Of course, you've also got the luxury of this being an open book exam. So if you're good at thinking on your feet, um, uh, that's going to help a little bit as well, isn't it? So maybe that's uh, something that can alleviate a little bit of anxiety as well. Uh, in the meantime, um, yeah, hope that helps in a very sort of uh, wordy way. All right, now I've seen the discussion board going off, so I'm going to scroll up to Snowy Emus freaking out faces and start playing again there. All right. Uh, watch lectures at double speed. Um, there you go, Alexis saying, but all seriousness, the same for pass, because that's all you need. Please get degrees. Um, Chris, can you please comment on how you would possibly play whether we access Google if we aren't allowed to? No, Aaron, I won't comment. <laughs> Um, so I've made numerous references all the way along to me having voodoo, and I do have voodoo. I've got more than one set of voodoo up my sleeve. Um, so people, I have received a few questions from people saying, 
how will you know if I share my exam questions with somebody else? Or how will you know if, you know, if somebody else asking for a friend happens to, uh, you know, cheat in some way? Oh, no, mama's got her ways, don't you worry. Um, and, uh, yeah, groovy voodoo techniques, damn straight. Uh, so I suppose... Speaking of PlayStations and things like that, as we were earlier on, video game developers have got a range of anti-cheat um, uh, techniques um, and ways they uh, ways and uh, of of analysing data to determine if something dodgy is going on. Um, and you'll note that they never tell people how to get around that. But it's the same with Google Capture for detecting bots and so forth. Uh, Google never discloses precisely how it works. Uh, the passive recapture, that is, version three. Um, and uh, I'm much the same. No hacking on this exam, no. Mama knows best, that's right. Hey, Ashley, I'd suggest that the majority of the questions will be coming to the from the lectures, but some will come from the tutorials as well. I'm a bacon. Oh, BCom. Sorry, Trinity. I'm a ba I thought it said bacon student. I was going to say, I, was there a, a, a subject on, on bacon? I missed that as an undergrad. I would have taken that one. I'm a BCom student taking MBB1 as my breath. Very good to have you along, Trinity. Um, I don't think I've actually ever had a subject post to provide an actual past year paper. That, that's, oh, you're answering somebody else. Yeah, that's right. No, we don't um, post previous papers. Uh, um, I think it's just a great way for people not to engage with actually learning anything. And that's, why we're here, it's why you're here, it's why I'm here to help you get to where you want to be with uh, by learning some psychology. So, um, I know there could absolutely be a bacon subject, couldn't there? Can you imagine how popular that would be? Oh my lord, girl. Chithuni, yeah, there is an active capture version of Google where you have to click a, a picture puzzle, you know, click all the sidewalks in the picture or help, you know, the blocks of sidewalks. But there's also a passive version of recapture that looks at things like um, metadata coming from users' computers and um, uh, what's going on behind the scenes, so to speak. So, you know, it would be looking at things like what was scrolled on a web page scroll before something was clicked, um, reaction times and, and so forth. It works on a range of different things and comes sort of out with a, a summary indicator of whether or not uh, something's likely to be a bot. Oh, Snowy, I like where you're going with this. A wine tasting subject as well. Yes, a wine tasting subject, a bacon tasting subject. I think we're on to a new major here, folks. Yeah. Not every question is an application. Jeez. Application based question. No, not every question is. This is just an example. Yeah. You can still ask definition questions, of course, in this sort of setting quite appropriately. It's, you almost reverse the way in which you would be asking it, right? Does that make sense? And that you might lead with the definition and ask for, you know, what the label would be. That would be one way to do it. I really haven't done that with research methods uh, all that much, but 
uh, I said earlier on, I want the research methods exam experience generally and the research methods learning experience to be stress-free. It is pretty stress-free. You're all going to find this exam to be very fair. There's nothing to worry about with this exam. We are going to test you. Well, what's the point, right? Um, and there is going to be a distribution of experience, uh, a distribution of scores on the exam. Some people are going to, it's going to play out exactly like it always does. The majority of people are going to be somewhere in the middle. Fewer people will do relatively less well and fewer people will do relatively better. No, I'm not going to be accessing your computer camera. No, no voodoo like that. I was, I was saying that's sort of the type of stuff that Google Recapture does. I have voodoo that is going to involve not violating your human rights. <laughs> it's not going to involve violating your human rights. Human rights intact, no spying, but I have my ways. <laughs> If you hear scratching at the window though, I might just wanna check, make sure I'm not outside. Is open book typical for psych exams? Good question, Kiara. No, it's not. We've never done this before at the undergraduate level. First time, sort of, not really. That's a lie, okay. We've not done it at this scale before at the undergraduate level. I have been doing first year exams in our summer semester that are exclude the summer semester is an exclusive program for the graduate diploma students. Um, and uh, we've been doing online open book exams there for a decade. So we already have a pretty good idea of what to uh, expect. But for Mind, Brain and Behaviour 2 next semester, all of the information I am receiving, and believe me, I'm being quite a pain uh, because I want a clear directive that everything's going to be online. And I'm pretty sure it is. I'm pretty sure that the entire semester two for Mind, Brain and Behaviour 2 is going to be online. That's what I'm planning or that's how I'm proceeding. Uh, and I think that's going to be an online examination as well. We'll just have to, uh, I suppose, see what happens, but I think it will be another open book online exam. So that's right. Go change that major. Come on back for Mind, Brain and Behaviour too. Uh, it's going to be good. Tracking your IP address. Oh, I've, I've been on to you for a long time, Charlie. Don't even try that... Um, Oh, what's it called? The What do you use if you want to hide your IP address? VPN. <laughs> Don't even try that VPN stuff with me. Do we have to pass this exam to pass the subject or do we just need enough to reach 50%? Asking for a friend. Hey, Prabal's friend. You could uh, tell your friend that they can chill out because they don't have to pass the exam to pass the subject. To pass mind, brain, and behavior one, you just need to pass the subject overall. So that means that when we put your assignment marks together, remember the assignment's worth 40% of your mark, the exam mark together, which is worth 55% of your mark and the 5% that you could have earned for REP, we slam that all together and mix it up. If that comes out at 50% or more, then you pass Mind, Brain and Behaviour 1. Yes, you can see the discussion board during the exam, but you can't comment on it. There's just one discussion board that you will be able to comment on, but I don't think you'll need to because the only, you can't be talking about the exam while it's going on. This is just not a thing. Um, I won't be answering any questions that come up about the exam or if somebody for shits and giggles wanted to post answers to the exam, then I will be all over them like white on rice. Just watch me. 
Um, but no, no chatting online about the exam or whoosh. Um, you're not going to need a calculator. It's going to be fine. Could, uh, hey, Leona, uh, could I give you an indication of what content past cohorts didn't do well on? Eh. Yeah. <laughs> um, not really. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the, the, the frank answer. <laughs> um, see, it's Friday afternoon. Chris is wearing down, but, uh, no, but no, seriously. Uh, if there are items that everybody gets wrong, for example, then we'll probably change them. So every... Every time we do an exam, afterwards we do an item analysis and we see how well each question performed. Um, and if there's something wrong with a question, if everybody gets a question wrong, there's probably something wrong with it. It's probably not because of its difficulty. There might be actually something more clunky with the question. But um, there's been a lot of work going into con the construction of these questions. We don't just pull them out of thin air. They're mapped against individual learning outcomes that we define for each lecture and each module and you know each tutorial class and whatnot. And um, they're checked by numerous people. And uh, so um, I think you're going to find it to be, it, it, there's nothing to worry about. And, and certainly nothing that I could tell you based on previous cohorts that have been meaningful for you here because so many of the questions are new as well. Hey, Jesse. Yeah, I mean, sort of. Yeah. Can you, if you don't understand the wording of a certain question, can you ask in a, in a discussion board you can, but you entirely run the risk of me probably not giving you a very useful answer other than referring you back to the question. Um, we have done quite a bit of inspection, but I mean, that's what that discussion board is there for. So if you've tried a dictionary and you still can't get it, my take at this point in time, given the amount of review I've done of the exam and others have done of the exam is that if you if a student doesn't understand the question, that's because they haven't studied the topic. Um, so uh, I am dreaming about those exam questions at the moment, but you can ask if you really get stuck. I will be on that discussion board. I'll be there live sort of during business hours, I'll be keeping an eye on the, the discussion board as much as possible. I'll certainly be there for the first couple of hours of, it's of the exam on Monday and keep an eye on it and make sure, keep an eye out for things that are coming in. Hey, William, no, it's not harder because of it being open book. Everything's still quite straightforward. Um, you know, just, and, and this sort of, I suppose, feeds into the previous question uh, that I was just sort of responding to from Jesse around the difficulty of wording of questions. Um, no, it's going to be a fair exam. And the, the questions are not worded in tricky, deceiving ways or, you know, challenging ways that require a mastery of the English language because I am so very aware that so many of you do not have English as a first language and you're studying in a second language. And it would be really uh, mean of me to um, try and trick you up like that. After all, this is not a language exam. It's a psychology exam. I'm interested to know about how well you've learned psychology, not how well 
to speak English, if that makes sense, or to read English. So the questions are quite clear, I believe, and so does everybody else who's reviewed the exam so far. Um, Liliana, I promise you it's not my version of hard. Um, I'm well aware that uh, my version of hard is a little different to most people's. Think of it as the generic definition of it's not hard. It'll be okay. Um, no, I'm not going to screw with your heads. Uh, and all of the other lecturers have just been very mindful of the the fact that it is challenge, it is very challenging for everybody to sit an exam, particularly if you're studying in a second language. Uh, you know, I do my best to be a faux Italian uh, as often as possible, and I just cannot imagine how bad <laughs> all, all of my assignments uh, and whatnot would be if I had to study in Italy. Uh, holy hell, it would be a nightmare. So my hat off to everybody who's studying in a second language. More power to you. Well done. Yes, you can use an online dictionary. That's fine. Um... Hey, Gail, the 5% credit from REP works out to be 5% towards the extra... Uh, uh, to your towards your mark so if you did one credit worth of REP study well done you got one point one percentage point towards your um, mind brain and behavior one mark uh... yeah. Shirui yeah well, um, I mean, up to you if you want to uh, watch back the previous live streams. I think we've covered a lot of the the things to do with the exam that um, you would want to cover. So probably not a good use of time at this point in time to go back and watch all of the live streams, given that they're all of comparable length to this, an hour at a time. You probably don't want to do that. You've got better things to do then sit there and listen, listen to my dulcet tones. I'm going to, because I'm just exploring ways of interacting with you all, I'm actually going to try and go live from my motorbike this weekend. We'll see how that works. Good question. Oh, isn't that dangerous? Um, I'm not going to be holding a camera, uh, Chethuni. So I've got... One of my cameras over here is the uh, GoPro Hero 8. This is the new one that um, I can um, live stream to you all with. So get stay tuned for that. Maybe we'll try and do a bit of a pre-exam chill out stream from the, the motorbike. Um, a friend of mine uh, who I work with occasionally uh, has a very popular podcast um, that I think often trends at like number one on iTunes in Australia. And he quite commonly uh, records his podcast while he's walking. Um, so uh, I thought I would um, pick up on what he does and uh, maybe try and replicate some of that more organic way, uh, sort of style of interaction with you, but actually do it live. Um, yeah, so if you've taken your notes on Google Docs or something like that, Patricia, you can as long as it's private. 
as soon as you start, you, you don't want to share, share a Google Doc with anyone while you're, or share anything with any other student while you're um, completing the exam. Um, that I can, that is the easy thing for me to work out if people have done that. So we don't want to do that because that ends up in people getting into trouble. Got to make sure that all of your exam work is your own and you're not consulting with others while you're doing it. Um, oh, I missed the question here. So somebody had a question about SPSS. With SPSS, you should know what, how to read output, particularly things like box plots. Know how to read a box plot. That would be a good thing for the exam. Notice how I'm answering the questions that I want to answer and there's ones that I keep ignoring. <laughs> yes, motorbike stream, says Chathuri. Oh boy, it's been a day. All right, so what do you reckon? Are we sort of getting there in terms of, I think, answering all of the questions? Um, Make sure you've got your little bell turned on so you can see me on the weekend if I go live. You get a little notification if I happen to be zooming around on the motorbike. Yeah, just, uh, just as long as you're not sharing that during anywhere during the week, Liam. So all of the sharing needs to stop from Monday 9 a.m. If that makes sense. What can you expect for mind brain behavior too? Nancy, I would love to get into that, but, and I will get into that, but I want to do it justice when I talk about what's coming up in mind brain and behavior too. There's a lot of work going into it. I'm really excited about it, and I'm hoping that so many people are going to come back for. Um, a really great second semester of psychology. And so many of the things that people are interested in, like personality, what makes you, you, unique? How did you end up being sort of like who you are? I just realised I was talking like Captain Kirk. You're me. Um, clinical psychology is my section. Mental health and mental illness and... Um, all sorts of things around that. And social psychology and um, developmental psychology, a lot of really interesting stuff coming up um, in Mind Brain Behavior too. but we'll do that another time. So um, I think I've probably done all the questions. Does anybody want to ask a last question? No. Okay. Well, hey Chris, when can I get a three? When can I get a three monitor set up? Um, Badia, just finish your um, mind brain behavior one subject, then do mind brain and behavior two, and the rest of the psychology major. Finish your bachelor degree then do an honours degree, maybe a master's and a PhD, um, then get a tenured job at Melbourne University and start a lab, do a really big national research project, um, and then you might be able to get uh, three screens to work with some data. Or just go out and buy three. <laughs> okay. 
but it's it's really you know, for those of you who work with data or, or work with you know um not even big data sets, even small data sets and sort of you know, writing on one thing. So it's very common that I'll have uh, sort of email and comms like messages and whatnot on one screen, uh, a Word document on one screen uh, and maybe an Excel uh, or SPS or some other statistical program on another screen. Um, it's a great way to save your eyesight. All right, lucky last answer here for Alexandra. Um, basically, uh, we addressed this at the start of this stream, but for the most part, all of the prescribed readings and the recommended readings are addressed in the classes as well. So focus on the class content and uh, you will be fine. The readings may also be touched on, but only if they've been touched on in classes. So the, if you focus on the classes, that's the, the best way to, to strategize and economize your, your approach. I hope that helps. Okay, everyone, so that's it. I'm going to uh, wind up there. Thank you very much for tuning in uh, and for the collaborative spirit in the discussion. It's been great. Uh, thank you for helping each other out. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being part of the MBB1 team. It's nice to have a community, especially when we're all stuck in our houses during lockdown, isn't it? Awesome. Great. Well, I hope you found that helpful. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Chithuni. Scout Snowy Emu, thank you. And uh, I will see you guys maybe on the weekend. We'll do def definitely on Sunday night with Charlie the chill stream, the pre-exam chill stream. Have a good one, everyone. Take care and uh, look after yourself while you're studying. All right. Bye now.